Altoona board is looking at um, you know, the executive team at Altoona Hospital as Altoona said, you know, we're into this population health. We're going to go out and start taking volume out. We're going to start managing the care of our population, determining who are high utilizers of services and start to in intervene in them and bring down utilization. What happens to your financial statements? Yeah. Boom! These guys, the administration, they go away. Board is not happy. This is schizophrenia. And what we've got to do is figure out how to get from here to here across this, this thing. We're right here in the middle, your feet are right above the crocodiles. Dr. Raj Kumahar came up with how we're going to think about it. He said that, that, that there's, there's, there's going to be four transitional, there's going to be four payment systems over time. First one is fee for service with no links to quality. That's this one right here. The second one is now fee for service, but now you get paid for things like annual wellness visits, you get paid for chronic care management, transitional care management, behavioral health management, you get cared for health activities, right? And so that's this one right here. I would put this one right here. Most of us in the United States today, the only one that are, are in this place right here. The second one, this is the, this is the one, alternative payment models built on a fee-for-service architecture. And when I say a fee-for-service architecture, what I'm saying is our financials still show anything we do around health craters our bottom line. That to me is rear feet right above the crocodile. It's terrifying. So we got to get off of that. The next one is AP population-based payment where it's population-based payment built on a population-based architecture. Now there's only one health system in the United States that has figured this out. Do you know who it is? It's not UPMC. It's Kaiser. Kaiser. Kaiser says, we're successful when our beds are empty. UPMC, the hospital people don't like the insurance people. That tells me that they're still dealing with this world right here, even though they should be in this world. Because the hospital people are trying to fill their beds, the insurance people are trying to keep the people out of their beds. That's schizophrenia. Okay, but what we have to do is methodically move across this. This next slide is everything we need to know about what our health system is going to look like in the future. If you believe with the fundamental concept that form follows function, follows payment. In other words, we organize ourselves around the functional imperatives of the payment system that exists. You guys are just hanging on, aren't you? You're struggling. You guys are struggling. I've only got like two more slides. So just, just, we're almost done. <laughs> You've done a nice job of hanging on now. Um, anyway, um, and, and so think about the functional imperatives of a fee-for-service payment system. To be successful in fee-for-service, what are the three things you can do by yourself as an organization? What are the three things you have to manage? Volume, cost, cost. cost. payment. <laughs> Did you say that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> payment. If you, if a one organization manages those three things, cost, utilization, and payment, one organization can be successful. So guess the form we got out of the fee-for-service payment system. We got a whole lot of ones competing with other ones on market share because that's what the functional imperatives of a fee-for-service payment system is. Now, flip it around to a population-based payment system. Altoona Hospital is responsible for the 60,000 people around the Altoona area. Can you do that on your own? No. You're going to need upside, you're going to need tradition, uh, tertiary providers, you're going to need home health, you're going to need ambulance, you're going to need nursing homes, post-acute care, you're going to need uh, public health. You're going to need all of these things. You can't do it alone. The other thing you're going to need, and this is a really important concept, and I, I wish I could stress this enough, you will have to take that residual claim, right? You will have to monetize the value of increasing quality, reducing cost. If you don't have that, that, <laughs> that residual claim on health, you will not have the incentives to do that. And so in order to have that residual claim on health, in other words, you profit from increasing the health of a population, You've got to have enough lies to, to, to diversify insurance risk, which means you have to have north of somewhere between 50 and 80,000 covered lives. 
and you can't do that alone. So now think of the functional imperatives now of a population-based payment system are aggregation of scale to invest in, to first diversify insurance risk, to have the resources to invest in a health system, and ultimately all of these linkages. And so we are going to ultimately, the form of the future is going to look like we are going to go from one organ, organizations competing other against organizations on their own price utilization and cost to aggregation of communities of organizations, diversify insurance rates, take that insurance risk and create health within their communities. And we got three and a half trillion dollars that says this is a force that can't be stopped. Because until the provider organizations take that residual claim, they're not going to be invested in health. Unless it's just out of the goodness of their heart. And you know what, as a CPA, that's a bunch of crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get through the last, uh, this is the last important slide, then I got two summaries, so, so let me spend three minutes on this, I mean, probably four minutes. Um, we believe this is the strategy for how organizations can move from fee-for-service to population-based payment. This is the Grand Slam slide. Matter of fact, I had in the capstone class last year, I had three people call me and had me re-explain this because they were using it in their projects with the, whoever the systems they were working with. So we're going to start with fee-for-service. We're going to go across because payment is going to dictate function imperatives and form. Payment is going to drive this. So this is time. This is 2014. This is today. This is three or four years out, this is six or seven or eight years out, and this is the future. The world of the future, ten years out, is large systems like Highmark, like Geisinger, like, like uh, um, uh, you know, Kaiser, that have actually figured it out. That's the future. In order to be successful, there are three things that we have to, there's three areas that we have to address, and we have to address them simultaneously. First of all, we have to transform sick care. We've got too much sick care. We've overinvested in sick care because that's what we get paid for today. We have to create health care. We have underinvested in health care because we don't get paid for health care today. And we have to transform payment because if we create health care, if we transform sick care, and we stay in fee for service, we're toast. There are three things, and we've got to keep them in lockstep. So, right now, there are three strategies to transform sick care. And this orange bar is the, the, the point where when the, the initiative hits it, you've got to implement. Right? So, this is so initiative one we've got to become more efficient, improve our quality scores, and engage patients. And everyone's doing that right now anyway, because this is what we've been doing forever. But we now have to start thinking about taking out 5% of costs out. The second thing is we have to align with our primary care. We better start planning today to align in the future. Why do we have to align with primary care when the payment system gets to the middle here? What are your primary care physicians? And if you're not aligned with your primary care physicians, guess what? Do, no, do not go past go. Do not collect $200. You're on the outside looking into a system that wants you to go away. You better come together with your primary care physician. So it means you better have a plan today to strike in the future. The next one is, and we're going to lose 5% of rural hospitals here. We've already lost 87 of them. We're going to lose 10% of rural hospitals here, and the market's going to force this. And then this next one is service error rationalization, coming together in larger systems to, in the end, take out big chunks of fixed costs. So if you're taking out 5% of your cost structure here, think about taking 15% of your cost structure here. This is a fundamental reorganization because when you get out here, what are your new expense centers? Technology, bricks and mortar, and specialists. And we have too much. So we've got to take that. And, and when we take out 20% out of our cost structure, we're going to take 10% and get it back into the investment into a healthcare system, which we're going to develop next. And we're going to take 10% and give it back to the GDP because we've taken too much. Okay? So, so we got to do this. We, these are the things. So we've got to create a strategy today around service error rationalization, a planning, implementation plan, and then a strike. Down here, we've got to create a health system. The only thing I can say about a health system is everything we do here while we're still in fee-for-service, we can't, we got to crawl. We create the foundation for health. If we jump in too fast, what's our board going to do? 
So we create the foundation, create a patient-centered medical home. You guys will hopefully be talking about that. Care management, start to develop data analytics capabilities where you can start to see claims information and really manage with claims. Evidence-based protocols, create that science of knowledge around how you care for patients. Out here, we start, you know, so think about this as walk, crawl, or crawl, walk, run, sprint in creating, creating a health system. And down here, we gotta move payment. So right now, today, Everything we can do to get paid for fee-for-service and quality utilization incentives like chronic care management, uh, um, annual wellness visits, all of these things, you know, MIPS, you know, maximize your mix payment, your mix, uh, MIPS payment with your physicians, right? And increase the incentives there. Use those dollars to fund this right here, the creation of a health system. Around here, transitional payment models, low risk or no risk population-based models so that we can learn that new thing. And we got to strike tomorrow, but we got to plan today, and this is taking on full risk. And so we better create a strategy, an implementation plan, and a strike point. In Pennsylvania, I, every time I give this presentation, I point to Pennsylvania and say, you are the most rapidly developing state for this. So in the end, when sick care, health care, and payment come under one umbrella, you got Kaiser, you got Geisinger, you got UPMC when they figure it out. This is how we're going to move from FIFA. You asked earlier, right? One of you asked. You said, how are we going to get there? We, we can't just jump. We do not have a health care system. We have a sick care system. How long, it's going to take time to develop a health care system. It's going to take some time, but we don't have the time, right? Because we got huge organizations saying, you know, you're too expensive, we're going to fix that. So, so really in conclusion here, we've been competing in this world of, of you know, zero-sum game of, of just you know, price, uh, you know, price times volume is net revenue. The fundamental change here is, is um, you know, we, gotta, we get this whole triple aim being played out, quadruple aim now, um, is all being played out right now, competition on, on quality over cost type of population. The, um, we're going to have to cross this shaky bridge. We are all ready, and many of us don't know it. We've stepped out onto it. And there's no going back. Because for all the reasons that we talked about, we have to move forward. And going forward is going to get real scary because our next step is our feet are right above those crocodiles. And it's not going to get better until we can separate ourselves from claims as a measure of revenue and expense. What I really like about the Pennsylvania global budget model is it takes away claims. Claims gives you the wrong reading on revenue and the wrong reading on expense. Here's what I mean by that. And then I'll finish up just last slide. Here's what I mean by that. You get paid today. You're in a hospital. You're, you're, you're a hospital. You admit a patient today. You recognize revenue of $5,000. You submit a claim, you get paid $5,000. Your charge was $10,000. You have a contractual allowance of five. You recognize revenue of $5,000. What was your cost of providing that service? What was your variable cost of providing that service? What was your contribution margin from providing that service? Let's say your variable cost were 500 bucks. Your contribution margin was 4,500. But what we're doing now is everything we're using to measure costs in healthcare is based on claims. Until we can separate measuring cost of care from claims, we're gonna screw this thing up every time. The global budget model in Pennsylvania does that, and I'm really excited about it. So, so anyway, um, we got we to we move forward, and these are some of the things that organizations should be thinking about. So Sir, as a CPA, I want to transform payment. My goal is to use rural hospitals to get into the alternative payment models, to start taking on and force the big boys to the table. I want to transform payment because as an accountant, as a CPA, I believe it is the payment system and the accounting system that has fundamentally got us where we are today and where we are today is not sustainable. I want a world where we focus on the reason why we're all in this is creating enough health care, tr truly creating a health care system with access to high quality sick care. Right now when you hear people get excited for an ice storm because it's going to generate volume Shame on us for a payment system that gets us excited about this. So as you guys go out through you know, the rest of this year, as you start to go out into your careers, make a difference in this world. Make a difference around transforming payment to transform the delivery system. Thanks for listening. Thanks for staying awake.
Thank you. <laughs> you know, we probably have like, we might have 30 seconds left for questions. <laughs> yeah. 30 seconds. <laughs> What slide was that? The different phases. Of yep, 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 yep. Um, so you mentioned that 86 were all hospitals closed. 87 as of last week. And then you said we're going to lose more. But we'll lose more. Yeah, and, and so the interesting thing here is, is when we lose them here and here, it's a market. The market forced the closure. Right. When we get down to here, this is going to be resource allocation decisions because revenue is premium dollar. And everything we do, the expenses, you know, so you have premium dollars revenue, and then the organizations, the larger systems, are going to make resource allocation decisions of where do they invest in healthcare and where do they invest in sick care. An example, four critical access hospitals in northern New Hampshire, in two county area. They don't need four hospitals. They probably need two hospitals and two urgent care centers. Three of those four hospitals right now do 24 7 general and orthopedic surgery. When the paint system gets out to here so we're going to lose we'll lose two rural hospitals here but it will be a it, it won't be a market